So allow me to preach tonight a message entitled Tug of War, The Struggle is Real. Tug of War, The Struggle is Real. Lord, have thine own way. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Back in January, I don't know if it was the second week or the third week, my wife got the flu. I got the flu. My youngest son, he had the flu. A week later, First Lady Wooden, she got the flu. Two weeks later, Bishop Wooden got the flu. <laughs> the whole family, whole house got the flu. And then all of a sudden, saints in the church start getting the flu. People just start getting sick of the virus going on. Everybody went through sickness in January and February. I don't know what was going on. But while I was asleep on a Tuesday night, I had flu-like symptoms on a Sunday, and it lasted all the way to Tuesday while being asleep. The Lord troubled my sleep. I woke up, and I was in cold chills, shivering and wet at the same time. And the Lord woke me up and said, tug of war. And I said, Lord, what are you saying? What are you talking about, tug of war? I mean, I, I thought you would have said Tamiflu. <laughs> you, you waking me up talking about tug of war. What's, what, what's really going on? The struggle's real. And the Lord said, tug of war, that's your theme. That's what you've been praying for. So I got up from my bed. I went and found my phone, looked up the term tug of war to find more understanding about it because I knew it had to go beyond just a simple sport. Amen. And then at around, uh, I believe it was 5.45, I sent Evangelist Douglas a text message and told her that I have the theme finally. And this is the theme that the Lord gave me for the revival. And the question tonight is, what is a tug of war? A tug of war is a contest in which two teams pull at opposite ends of a rope until one drags the, over, the other over a central line. It's a situation in which two evenly matched people or factions are striving to keep or obtain the same thing. According to Reverend Oxford's, Oxford English Dictionary, it says that the phrase tug of war originally meant the, decif the, the decisive contest or the real struggle or tussle or a severe contest for supremacy. Only in the 19th century was it used as a term for an athletic contest between two teams who haul at the opposite end of a rope. So our youth are in a battle. They're in a tug of war. It's a supreme contest for dominion. And the enemy is at the other end of the rope pulling with, it, with everything that he has. And our youth are drifting and walking through society, sometimes looking like zombies. You look them in the eyes and you don't even know whether they're coming or going. But they don't know spiritually that they're in a tug of war. They're in what I call a real struggle and a real tussle. Prove it tonight, youth pastor. Well, our youth are in a, tug, in a tug of war with sight. Sight stands for seduction, infatuation, temptation, and enticement. And the enemy is using everything that he can. He's using every seducing spirit that he can find to pull our children away from Christ. And when he pulls them away, he has to hook them to something. And the next thing that they fall into is infatuation. That's when you've been overtaken in sin. And through it, he leads them further into temptation, temptation and enticement. Am I, am I saying anything tonight? Our youth are in a tug of war against the spirit of murder that has been released in the land. According to CNN, there has been, on average, one school shooting every week this year. Let that sink in. It, one school shooting every week this year. Some young person has gone to school with a gun just to blow someone's brains out. 
And we see on television now that people are trying to blame this murderous spirit on guns. As if a gun can walk to school. As if a gun can jump into a book bag. And, if, and, as, and, as, a, and as if a gun can pull a trigger. But the issue that we are seeing here today is Matthew 24 and 12 where the Bible says, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Hear me tonight, young people. We live in a cold world. And as sin increases, as sin takes over, as sin metastasizes, we see that the, man, the hearts of, of, of men have grown cold and dark. And not only is it getting cold out here, it's getting dark too. It's getting dark and ugly, but you know when it gets dark, it's the perfect time for Christian believers. Because we shine brighter in the night. Our youth are in a tug of war when it comes to the occult world through the constant jamming of witches, warlocks, and wizards. Back in January, I went to Barnes & Noble to find out what were some of the best-selling books that our youth were reading, only to find out that 60 to 70% of the books that our youth are reading are books that are filled with witches, warlocks, and wizards. Books like Harry Potter, we already know about that one. The Olympian series by Percy Jackson. The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. The Diary of a Wimpy Kid series by Jeff Kennedy. The Dogman series by Dave Pilkey. Wings of Fire, Unwanted, The Warrior series, and The Last Kids on Earth, Zombie Apocalypse. Parents, if you have those books in your home, go home and get them out. You know, there was a time where your parents could take you to the library. They could sit over there and read a book themselves and let you select the book on your own. You know, we could do that. But nowadays, the parent has to almost read the book from cover to cover before they can allow you to even read it. Because there's always some attempt of the enemy to put something in the book that can pull the hearts and the minds of our children away. 70% of the books in Barnes and Nobles are filled with witches, warlocks, and wizards. And we think that when our children go to the internet, they're going to the World Wide Web. But they're really going to witches, warlocks, and wizards. See, I want to tell everybody tonight, and I want you to remember this and never forget it, that in the kingdom, you cannot have your cake and eat it too. See, in the kingdom, it's either you come out and be se separate or go to hell with icing on your lips. But either way, you got to make a definitive choice for the things of God. Our youth are in a tug of war with this new challenge of snorting condoms. Who would have ever thought that we would be in a day? Where young people will be taking condoms and snorting them through their nose just to see them come out their throat. It's getting dark out here. We are going back to the days of Ephesus, of Ephesus and sin is running rampant daily. Proverbs 27 and 22 says, You cannot separate fools from their foolishness. Even though you grind them like grain with mortal and pestle. What does that mean? That means that you can take a person or an object and burn it down to powder and grind it up for days. But at the end of the day, the object is still foolish because it's foolish by nature. Here comes Peter. Peter said that this proverb has happened unto us. The dog has returned to his vomit and the pig to wallowing in the mud. I don't care how much you clean a pig up. You can wash a pig for 10 days, dip him in bleach, put him in fabuloso, put him in Clorox, whatever you want to. But that pig going to come out and run to the mud. Why? Because he's dirty by nature. And it's the nature of a person that Jesus Christ came to change. Am I saying anything tonight? Our youth are in a tug of war with Planned Parenthood, Walt Disney, and the LGBTQ 
movement. Just last week, Planned Parenthood released a statement and then tried to delete it. This is what they said. They said, we need a Disney princess who's had an abortion. Let this sink in. We need a Disney princess who's pro-choice. What does pro-choice and abortion have to do with Disney? Think about it. Parents, what does abortion and Disney have to do with each other? He, they also said we need a Disney princess who's an undocumented immigrant. What does Disney have to do with immigration? Said we need a Disney princess who's actually, watch this, a union worker. And this is liberalism one-on-one if, if, you, if you haven't figured it out already. And then lastly, they said, we need a Disney princess who's trans. And why do we need this? Because we need to jam up the minds of this generation. We need to, uh, to warp their minds so bad that when they see these things, they accept them as normal behavior. We need to put this stuff in front of them at a young age. Let's put it in the cartoons. Let's put it on the game system. Let's find a way to put it in there so that when they see these things, they will learn to accept it. And lastly, our youth are in a tug of war with this modern day rap culture. You know, rappers like NBA Youngboy. Never be broke again. I guess that's what his name means who is only 18, but has four children by three different women out of wedlock. I don't know why you would want to listen to a rapper at 18 who has four children out of wedlock by three different women. And as you listen to NBA Youngboy and dance to NBA Youngboy, NBA Youngboy ain't going to treat you like the beat. NBA Youngboy going to treat you like the lyrics. And he's going to do the same thing to you that he's done to all of these girls that he's screwed and left with babies. We are in a tug of war. Rappers like Little Baby and J.D. Youngin and Young M.A. She's a a self-professed lesbian rapper who in her songs talk about how she molests and turns out girls for fun. This is the junk that's being pushed in our youth system. Rapper named Rennie Rucci and Kodak Black and 6ix9ine who has the, the rainbow on his uh, gums, on, on, on his, what do, what do you call those? Fangs. What do you call them? The grills. The grills. I don't even know what they call them. <laughs> got, got the rainbow on his grill and then rainbow colors in his hair. And claims to be a blood. And see the bloods right now are upset with 6ix9ine. Because you can't be a blood and and be a punk at the same time. You know you can't be a crip and have a broken wrist at the same time. You you, you can't be a 5 percenter and be effeminate. But nowadays we have a culture where you can be Christian and be anything. See, see, the rappers have more standard than we do. We are seeing that the rappers nowadays have more courage to stand up for what they believe. And I heard, I had someone tell me, you know, you know, it's gone on the days of preaching against rap music. Someone told me that, you know, some renowned evangelist who had traveled the world, gone on the days of preaching about that stuff. Let me tell you something. I know what it's like to be in the club. Before I got saved, I was a bouncer in the club. I was at the club when the club opened. And I was at the club when the club closed. But when I came to Jesus, I went to my dorm room, grabbed all of my rap CDs, took them to the garbage can at St. Augustine's College, and threw them away. Why? Because I knew that light and darkness could not coincide or fellowship together. See, we're living in the last and evil days. 
Uh, brother, Brother Simon, please play that video that I have. This video about Little Uzi Vert. Come on, play the video. I want to show now you I something. Do what I want. We said. Now I do what I want. 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 Okay. Now I do what I want. That's little Uzi Vert. Little Uzi Vert. When you say his name fast, it says Lucifer. Little Uzi Vert. Little Uzi Vert. Little Uzi Vert. And he is a self-professed Marilyn Manson worshiper. And he worships the devil. Matter of fact, he purchased a $50,000 medallion just to show that he believes in Marilyn Manson. And look at what he's saying on the video. He's saying, now I can do what I want. Now I can do what I want. Now I can do what I want. Now I can do what I want, which is the spirit of the age. Everyone wants to do what they want. We are back in the days of the judges where everyone did what was right in their own eyes. And listen to me, parents, let me tell you something tonight. The last thing you want to do is put a device in your child's hand in elementary and allow them to have access to the internet. Let me tell you something. If your child ain't even old enough to remember to put dirt deodorant on in the morning. When you wash their clothes, you see skid marks in their drawers. But you're going to mess around and put a phone in their hand and give them access to the in internet. We are in a tug of war. We're in a bad place. In a bad place. But let me tell you something tonight. Listen, listen. The greatest vice that we are contending with today are is devices. That's the greatest vice. This thing has hooked so many. And parents, hear me. Your daughter's five or six. What is she doing with a cell phone? In middle school, going to school, I got to call my mom. What you need a phone for? Shouldn't there be an adult on the bus? Shouldn't there be an adult in the classroom? Too much access. And while you're trying to have access with your child everywhere, they have access to filth and junk. And it's corrupting their spirits. Listen, if they're not old enough to remember to wash the soap off the back of their head when they get out the shower, they're not old enough to have a cell phone. We're in the days of Ephesus. We're in the middle of a riot and chaos and pandemonium is going on. But I want to know tonight who's on the Lord's side and who's going to stand for Jesus. All right, play this last video and I'm going on. I got another video for you. I want to show you something. This is not a money-driven project. It's a spirit-driven project. It was, it was always in me, you know, from the moment I came into the music industry, I always had gospel music influences. Uh, I always referred to, to my Savior and Jesus Christ on most of the records that I spoke on. I always had moments where I would reflect on that and let people know that I was a born-again Christian. So it was just time for me to actually put my money where my mouth was as far as like making a project solely dedicated to this style of music with great musicians and just not really be about money but be about spirit so everybody that's involved really gave me their spirit their time and their love and that's what it's all about that's why it's getting so much love back because that's the whole purpose of it just to give love to get love what do you say to people that don't like the idea of a secular artist coming into gospel music Watch this. Well, the devil is a lie I thought church was supposed to welcome sinners if the church was full of saints, it wouldn't be right. So if you're finding somebody trying to find their way back home, the natural thing to do is to be warm welcoming. Open your arms and say, brother, we accept you for who you are and what you're going through. Come as you are. We know you've been doing wrong and you want to get right, so we're going to help you get right. We're not going to throw stones on you when you're trying to get right and walking back into the church house. That's what's running people away from church right now as we speak and we're trying to get people back in church with a different perspective of come as you are show love it has no perspective on nothing but love we show love we give love i don't pay no attention to the negativity because i have yet to get any negativity the only negativity i get is when a question is asked but i've never been confronted with anybody in the gospel world i just got hugged by donnie mcclurkin kirk franklin 
I got the Clark Sisters. I can name all these legends. Rance Allen, these are elders and legends in the game. If they don't have a problem with it, you shouldn't either. Now, and if you do, what's happening? Yeah, I said it. What's happening? What about you? Have you checked your status? Are you, you going to heaven? Why are you judging me? How much work have you put in for the Lord? Hmm. Rebel. The Reb needs to hear that because I know one of the Rebels got something to say and I just wanted to say that right back to you, Reb. Praise God. Now, now, let me, there's so many ways I can attack this. Number one, Snoop Doggy Dog is not qualified to address the church. Number one, when I came up in the church as a young man, they were told you to sit down. That's number one. Number two, Snoop Doggy Dog must have a false doctrine of Christianity. Because this Bible tells me, wherefore you must come out from amongst them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And then it says, what fellowship has light with darkness. And then it said that a man cannot serve two masters. See, see, let me tell you something. The wicked strut. The wicked strut on every side. When the vilest of men are promoted. And the issue today is we are promoting vile people who have a spirit of emphasis, who are more concerned with money than they are souls. We're living in the days of Ephesus. Listen to me tonight. Listen, listen. Snoop Doggy Dog, he quotes four names to give him a license to do what he is doing. And I got a message for the legends tonight. I got a message for the legends tonight. Jeremiah 13 and 23 says, it says, can an Ethiopian change your skin? Can an Ethiopian change your skin? And can a leopard change his spots? Neither can you start doing good for you have always done evil. Snoop Doggy Dogg is on record saying that he revolutionized porn. And with the number of men who are messed up, who watch porn, who are even in the church. The, I said the church. The last thing we want to do is elevate Snoop Doggy Dog to a throne where he can now tell the church what to do. And here we are as youth pastors and as youth workers and as youth staff trying to tell this generation that on a hill far away to the old rugged cross but then they're going to use people like that to give them a, a license to do what they're doing I heard the Bible said let God be true and every man a liar let me tell you something Snoop Doggy Dog is vile he's filthy he's nasty and he got a kundalini spirit he's ugly, he's dirty, he's corrupt let me tell you something. He has his own line of alcohol. Getting ready to do a tour. Up and smoke tour. But he can get on an album with all of these legends. Let me tell you something tonight. When Jesus comes back, he ain't coming back for no legend. When the Lord comes back, he ain't coming back for no celebrity. He said that I'm coming back for a church without a spot or wrinkle. And I want to tell you today that we have impurities in our feasts. We allow these men to go to the church and tell the church what to do. But I want to tell you tonight that let God be true and every man alive. And I want to tell our young people tonight, don't get your doctrine from Snoop Doggy Dog. Get your doctrine from the Word of God. Because every time I read the Word of God, I find out that holiness is right. That you got to be clean. That you got to be righteous. That you got to be holy. 
ain't trying to be no legend. I just want to be a dolos. I just want to be a servant of the most high God. Is there anybody here who just want to be a servant tonight? Lift your hand and say yes. I just want to be a servant. Go ahead and give God some praise tonight. Give him praise. I said give him praise because you're just glad to be a servant. Listen, Jesus Christ wasn't a legend. Matter of fact, when he came to earth, he was a nobody. How do you know? The Bible says that foxes have holes and birds have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Our Jesus was not a legend. He took upon him the form of man and became be obedient to him. Even to the death of the cross, he won't no legend. And on Calvary, he could have been a legend and took himself off. But he stayed on Calvary's cross for my sin and yours. I come to tell these legends tonight that ain't nobody God but God. And ain't nobody saving but Jesus. And if you better, you better get your life right. And you better get saved today and give God back his glory. If you believe that tonight, say hallelujah. I got to move on. I got to move on. I got to move on tonight. First Timothy 6 and 10 says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. I want to tell you tonight that if you don't believe the word of God, you're in error. I want to tell you tonight, when you cross Jesus, you're in error. And to be in error is to be wrong. It means to fumble. And it means to stumble. It means to miscalculate and to blunder. But I want to tell somebody here tonight um, that you can get your situation right if you just come to Jesus because he's ready, willing, and able to save any man. But in our text tonight, the Apostle Paul is dealing with the same kind of situation. We see him in Acts chapter 19, verse 11. And the Bible says, And God wrought special miracles by the hands of of Paul so that from his body were bought unto him sick handkerchiefs or aprons and it healed people who had diseases verse 13 says then certain of the vagabond Jews exorcists took upon them to call over to, to which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus saying we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached and there were seven sons of Sceva you know about them don't you and they said, and the spirits looked at the seven sons of Sceva and said, Paul, I know, Jesus, I know, but who are you? And the people got excited in that city because they saw what the evil spirits did to the men who tried to gain the power of the cross. And then the word got out that Paul had a power that could not be stopped. The word got out that Paul had something that the magicians did not have. The word got out that Paul had a power that could save and change any situation. And so people started talking about the Apostle Paul in Ephesus and in Asia and everywhere around. And we find in verse 23 tonight, and it says that there arose a no small stir about the way. Everybody in Ephesus was talking about Jesus. They were talking about that Galilean wonder worker. They were talking about the power that he had. And Paul's preaching hurt the economy of Ephesus. They were there selling shrines. And these shrines were shrines of a goddess Diana. And the goddess Diana was a multi-breasted god. 
it was a false and corrupt God and everybody who came to Ephesus made sure they got at least a souvenir before they left but Paul's preaching stopped people from going and get those souvenirs those people went from being customers to being a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ and everybody got upset in Ephesus and they were confused and they wanted to destroy Paul and I hear Demetrius say whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said sirs you know that by this craft we have our wealth in other words these shrines pay big money gospel music pays big money Disney pays big money Planned Parenthood pays big money the LGBTQ movement pays big money everybody running for the almighty dollar but ain't nobody trying to run to Jesus so in Ephesus Paul had messed up the business and they had to find a way to shut Paul down so they gathered the craftsmen together and told him we need to start a riot in this place and I heard him in verse 27 saying so that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught but also the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed whom all Asia and the world worship him and when they heard these sayings they were full of wrath they were upset with Paul they wanted to rip him apart they wanted to destroy Paul and they wanted to kill him and the city was filled with confusion the city didn't know what side to stand on the city was perplexed the city was confused but I want to ask somebody today who's on the Lord's side are you confused or do you know where you stand I want to tell you tonight at the age of 19 at 18 I was confused but at the age of 19 I wasn't confused no more I went to the cross and I said Lord save me I need power to overcome sin I need power to overcome my flesh and ain't it good to know that when you call on Jesus he'll give you power power to stand strong power to fight power to tug of for her is there anybody in here that just need more power you're in a situation but you need more power from God I come to tell you tonight that not by might nor by power but by my spirit say of the Lord if you believe that give God some glory tonight I got something I need to show you Get ready to show you something. As I was preparing this message, the Lord told me to get a rope. The Lord told me to get some chains. See, this week we are in a tug of war. Yes, sir. Hear me, young people, when I say this. We are in a battle for supremacy. And the Holy Ghost showed me that while I was preparing this message, that the reason why many of our youth are not 
able to pull against the enemy is because they're already bound. See, I've never met a homosexual get free from homosexual while still practicing homosexuality. I've never met a drunkard give up that night train and that Coke 45 and that Mad Dog 2020 while still drinking. I've never met a young man to give up fornication while still having a box of condoms in his book bag that his parents don't know about. I've never yet met a young lady get over a spirit of lesbianism while still having sleepovers with your girlfriend. See, parents, you need to know tonight. You need to know that many of these young ladies and many of these young boys that you're sending your children out, they're really BFFs. And a BFF is a close friend. It's a friend that's very close. It's a person that sits in your lap. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. It's a person that shares the covers with you. But the Holy Ghost showed me, Sam, the first thing we need to do tonight, we need to get some people free. And see, the Bible says who the Son sets free is free indeed. See, you can't pull on the rope right. You, 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 your hands are tied. You're in bondage and you just can't fight. You know, you wouldn't be snorting condoms if you wasn't in bondage. You wouldn't be impressed by Katy Perry when she said she kissed a girl and she liked it if you wasn't in bondage. But first and foremost, you got to get rid of that bondage first. And they told me in the old time church that the way to get rid of bondage is that you got to confess your faults. You, 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 you got to go to Jesus and say, Lord, it's John. Standing in the need of prayer. I come to you tonight in these chains. And I want you to set me free. Lord, it's not my neighbor, but it's me tonight. I need salvation. I need the Holy Ghost. And I need power. Purge me with hyssop. We don't do purging no more. The Bible says purge me with hyssop. And I shall be clean. Wash me. And I'll be whiter than snow. Creating me a clean heart. You got to go to God like you're desperate. You got to get sick of the change. And when you go to God, God will give you a power that will set you free. But the only way to get free, you got to get power from someone that has more power than you. You got to have the Holy Ghost. And then you got to come to church. I said you got to go to church. You got to come to youth Bible study. You can't spend all your time at AAU. You got to go to youth Bible study on Wednesday night. Your children don't even know where the room is. You need to come to youth Bible study. You need to come on Thursday night to Thursday night teaching and hear from the man of God. And then you need to come on Sunday morning. And while you're serving the Lord, the Lord going to do something. He going to set you free. And now that you're free, you can really fight. Because I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. Don't go nowhere. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. I'm free. Is there anybody in here tonight? that remembers that night that you got free. You know what was going on. You know what you were planning to do when the Lord set you free. I was getting ready to go back to work. 
back to that stinking club but the Lord set me free and I'm glad tonight that I'm free because I got power to walk I got power to talk and I got power to preach and I'm not trying to go back I just want to press for it looking unto Jesus who's the author and the finisher of my faith when I was y'all's age I was in church in the morning at noonday prayer calling on the name of Jesus if you want to be free you can be free so that you can fight and once you get free now you can tug of war and see when you first start tugging you got to get your endurance up and get power to be able to pull but as you serve God he give you power he give you power he give you power to pull the enemy away from you and the fight does anybody want that power tonight tell the Lord yes I ain't through yet and then sometimes you might go through a season where it seems as if you're fighting fornication you're fighting pornography I need some more down there you're fighting things on social media. I need one more person down there. You're fighting depression. I need another person down there. You're fighting opioid addictions. Come on, I need another person down there. You're fighting against your own mind. And it seems as if the enemy is dragging you. But I heard the Bible say that God is long suffering to us word not willing that any should perish and while I was studying about the tug of war I learned that there's a method called hanging what does it mean to hang well when you're going against a big enemy you gotta shift your weight you gotta put your weight into it and when you drop your weight the enemy don't know what to do the Bible is full of hanging scriptures can I give you one no weapon formed against me shall prosper every tongue risen in judgment shall be condemned say I say I I got another hanging scripture they that be with us are more than they that be with them if you believe it tonight give God glory give God praise hallelujah Come on, lift your hands. Young people, meet me at the altar. Stay right here. We're getting ready to have some spiritual tug of war. You got to learn how to shift your weight when the enemy is pulling. You got to shift your weight. And put your weight on Jesus. Put your weight on it. <laughs> and I heard the Bible say, lay aside every weight and sin that so easily besets us and run this race. Are there any young people tonight that say, you know what? I'm tired of being bound with my chains at. I'm tired of being bound. But I just want to be free. But set me free. I'm a youth pastor. I got to use anything that works, baby. I'm a youth pastor tonight. Good God Almighty. Lord, I just want to be free. I don't want to be silly anymore. 
I don't want to be in the closet anymore. I don't want to do dumb stuff anymore. But I want to be free. And if you want to be free, just lift your hands up. I can't set you free. Only Jesus can do that. But he won't make you. So all around this altar tonight, hands lifted, eyes closed, and I want you to talk to the Lord for yourself. I'm not going to lay one hand tonight. That's tomorrow night. Tonight is your own personal tug of war. God told me to tell you even while preparing this message. If they don't want it, they won't get it. But if they want it, I'll give them a better deal. I'll give them something that they never imagined or dreamed of. Lift your hands tonight, young people. All eyes closed, cry out to God. The only way to get out of what you're in, you got to confess something. Lord, I confess my faults tonight. And I realize that there are many. Lord, I'm tired of hiding in plain sight. These medicines that my parents have me taking, they don't have anything to do with ADHD or depression. I got to be honest, I'm just unruly. These meds that they prescribe me and I take, I don't need any medicine. I just need to learn obedience. And in the, in the middle of the word obedience is the word die. And I've never met a person become obedient without first dying. You got to die to sin. You want to get rid of a bad habit? I'll tell you how. Stop. I don't have a deep message on how to stop sinning. Stop. S-T-O-P. And youth, I've told you many times before, and I tell you again tonight, the Holy Ghost is leading me to say it again. God says he's long-suffering. How do you explain long suffering? Long suffering is a candlestick that burns for a long time. But when the wick is gone, that candle ain't going to burn no more. You can have a candle at home from Yankee Candle. You can still have wax in the jar. But I don't care how many times you strike that match, that wick ain't going to burn. And when God's wick goes out, that means that judgment is there. And I want to tell you tonight, young people, you would much rather obey God than to fall into the hands of an angry God. Now lift your hands up. I got three more minutes. Give them your junk. Give them your junk tonight. Give it to them. Give it to them. Come on, young people. You can type. You can talk. You can say something. Give it to them. Give it to them. Lord, I just want more of you. I just want you to touch me, Lord. I just want you to change me, Lord. Change my walk. 
change my attitude change my thought process I don't want to go through this anymore we rebuke the spirit of suicide in the name of Jesus Lord set your youth free tonight in the name of Jesus if you cry out to him he'll cry back to you if you call on him he'll answer income come on and cry out to God tonight I said, come on and cry out to God tonight. Say, Lord, set me free. Come on, you got to say it from your belly. Say, Lord, set me free. Come on, one more time. And after you say it, just go up in a praise. Say, Lord, set me free. Now give up glory. Give up glory. Give up glory. Give up glory. Yeah. Give up glory tonight. I say give up glory tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You can be free if you want to. All he wants is a yes. Sell the Lord yes. Sell the Lord yes. Sell the Lord yes. Yes. Deliverance is in the room. Yeah. Oh. Breakthrough is in the room. If you want it, reach out for it. Lord, I want it. You can be free if you want to. You can be delivered if you want to. Just tell God. Just tell God. Lord, Lord. I got to be free. I got to be free. No more chains. Hey, hey, hey. Glory to God. No more chains. No more chains. No more chains. Hey, 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 hey. No more chains tonight. On the 50th anniversary of Martin Luther King Jr., I'm free at last. I'm free at last. Thank God Almighty that I'm free at last. If you want to be free, hey, 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 let freedom ring at the altar. Good God Almighty. Let freedom ring at the altar tonight. Let freedom ring from the pews. Let freedom ring from the pulpit. I'm free at last. Yeah. Thank God Almighty. I'm free at last. Now embrace that freedom. There's a glory in this place. We're getting ready to dismiss. It's 9.55. But I have a dream. 
My grandmother had a dream for me. My grandmother's dream was that I'll be free and I'll preach his gospel and I'll tell a dying world about Jesus. Your parents have a dream for you. Your mama got a dream for you. Your daddy got a dream for you. Be free. Be free. In the name of Jesus. Give me the oil. We're going old school holiness tonight. Be free. Hey. Good God Almighty. Hey. Good God. Hey. Be free. Hey. Shut up. Be free. Free in the name of Jesus. Every stronghold, every devil, every demon, take your hand off. Be free. Oh God. Woo. It feels good to know that I'm free. It's a mighty, mighty, mighty good feeling. We'll see you tomorrow night. I have a message entitled, entitled, I'll tell you tomorrow night. Lift your right hand and shout, God, first. I'm free at last.